Hi, uh, today is uh, Sunday, it's 11th of April 2021. Uh, we are officially into autumn and uh, we still have got, uh, as you can see, the vines are and the plants, they're coming to the eventual uh, end of their life cycle. Yet, as you can see in my feet, if we have uh, just harvested, we'll show you uh, that session in a bit, but uh, majority of the people in Christchurch in Auckland uh, their plants have pretty much finished. So it's the money maker and it's still going quite strong. It's uh, it's giving fruit now on the, on the top compartment. We have still got a lot of fruit that we need to harvest. Uh, we are lucky, the weather has been uh, really kind. Uh, the tomatoes are ripening nice and well. I've taken off uh, all the ones that were half ripened and full ripened. So for the rest of the part of the world, uh, it's just the time when they would start to uh, plan what they need to you know uh, germinate officially I'm in, in the rest of the world I'm hoping that all of you guys have already germinated uh, your plants uh, and all the varieties that you want to uh, do this uh, the spring but uh, there is one big consideration uh, on that front that is uh, do try and germinate your own plants I mean we have done season one completely on this thing that uh, Everything that we have uh, done indoors, the plants that we germinated indoors, their health, their stealth, their productivity, and the overall life cycle of those plants was much better than the one that I bought from the nursery. However, going to the nursery, if you want a shortcut, you want to get the plants into your patches, if you think you're not, uh, uh, you don't have enough time to do all of that practice, you know, the indoor germination takes about a uh, good four to six weeks after the germination of the plant for for the plants to get uh, to a height and to a health where you can actually transfer them into their patches especially people living in England uh, I've heard in Reading it's it snowed about a few days ago so it is really hard for you to you know uh, uh, get this process kick-started so it's always better to germinate your plants indoor now when it comes to germination from where do you need to procure the seed um, I'm sure um, in, uh, in New Zealand, we've got Mitre 10, we've got Bunnings, we've got lots of big stores from where you can uh, procure the seeds. It's tried and tested. In the UK, uh, there are lots of uh, good uh, DIY stores from where you can procure the seed. Do read on the label what kind of seed you're procuring. Do not procure a hybrid seed, which uh, as for my experience is quite weak and it needs a lot of synthetic fertilizer for you to be able to help the plant to, you know, grow and uh, give you good quality uh, production. Plus, from uh, the very point uh, of uh, start life cycle of starting the life cycle of the plant until it bears fruit, you constantly need to, you know, stay on top of the top of uh, the nutritional need of the plant. As far as uh, the heirloom variety, which I'm going to be doing from this point onwards, this season we have done a heirloom variety and uh, it has given us immense results. So try and do the indoor germination and uh, make sure when you're preparing uh, your patches you're using good quality sheep pellets, horse manure, cow manure, chicken manure, whatever you're using try and use um, good quality coffee grounds as well because they they encourage the earthworms to you know uh, get active in your patches. Uh, lots of people they spend a lot of money on uh, worm casting and uh, I found this shortcut in the last uh, one year that if your patches are loaded, when I say loaded, that means if they've got decent amount of uh, coffee grounds, because it would raise the pH of your soil. It, it makes the soil acidic, so you gotta be careful. Don't overload your patches with the coffee grounds. It would encourage a lot of uh, earthworms to come into your uh, patches, which is like uh, the movement underneath the plants. It's, it's done by the earthworm, which really helps the plant in good growth. Uh, try and get, uh, if you are into fertilizing your plants, Try and get uh, the specific fertilizer which is meant for the plants. I mean, these these uh, plants are in in, in the background. Uh, my anticipation was they would go maximum to the height of five feet, and uh, by the time we have hit this uh, juncture of the weather, they have gone almost up to eight feet. I I, I stopped giving them support to go any further because uh, it was getting a bit too much. Plus, we were you know uh, working on other few patches, so. We knew that it's the, the, the life cycle is ending anyways. So uh, on that note, we'll give you a quick review of what we have harvested. 
in this uh, uh, at this time of the year, you got to be really, really vigilant. You don't want to waste your food because it, you have invested a lot of time in uh, on the plants, lots of energy, lots of effort. So be vigilant on your uh, uh, harvest. I've taken off every tomato on the wine and wine uh, plant in Rambal, which was turning a little bit of color. They would uh, uh, get eventually ripened on the kitchen shelf, right? So let's show you how this was done. Oh, hi again. So that was a lot of hard work. I mean, with the, the help of the technology, you've seen about 15 minutes worth of work in about a few seconds. So that these are like uh, the blessings of technology. So once again, um, thank you very much for supporting us uh, as today probably would be the last episode for uh, the season one that uh, well, we would call Project Food Garden season one. So. What have we achieved out of it? Uh, I mean, my brother always says that uh, there's an opportunity in the eye of the storm. So while the pandemic, pandemic was going on, I mean, people were suffering COVID-19. I mean, I myself for once was uh, a victim as well. I survived and uh, I started appreciating life. Um, I've got more than one takeaways. Uh, after suffering from this uh, virus and then getting back to my normal life, did suffered uh, a bit of partial memory loss to start with, but uh, it's uh, <clears throat> like I said, there is an opportunity in the island storm. So we started working on this during the lockdown, and uh, we have achieved more than we had imagined. I mean, the idea was that I mean, you can use your time positively or negatively, that's totally up to your personal choice. Life is all about making uh, uh, sensible choices and wise or wiser decisions with every day. So instead of getting logged up and uh, doing nothing, watching telly and, uh, you know, do gossip all day, we as a family decided to, you know, start working on uh, the garden. And, uh, you know, from that point in time, March 2020, up till this uh, uh, day, March 21, uh, I mean, if I would start counting the fruit and veggies separately, uh, we have not shown you everything that we have done because uh, like, uh, we were going through the process of evolution as well when we started working on this idea. So initially our focus was uh, on the green peas, on spinach, on radishes, carrots, beetroots, turnips. Uh, um, we were doing uh, green onions and then all of a sudden I found out uh, that I need to give a lot more time to the tomato patches and there was indoor germination going on from the word go uh, second week of July. So. It has been a busy, good uh, eight months, and uh, I have received uh, a few, not more than a few, uh, uh, feedback from uh, people in the U.S., Europe, and locally from uh, Auckland and Christchurch, that we want to be able to see this process from the word go. So come this spring, I mean, in New Zealand, we cannot say that next year, because the spring is going to be around in about uh, less than 150 days. So. We have got lots of work now. Once we conclude the season, what we'll do is, we'll start working on clearing up all the patches. I had the intent of doing uh, winter wedges, so we got into a big challenge on that front. <clears throat> Not important, we'll talk about that some other time. So, we need to prepare the ground and let it rest for the next uh, two months. Uh, we also have an intent, I mean, it's not finalized that yes, as yet, but we are thinking of making our own custom-made uh, greenhouse. So we're looking into the dimensions and uh, uh, the possibilities of where to do it in, in the garden. Uh, <clears throat> so the list of wedges that uh, that we have done in Project Food Garden in, uh, in, in, in this last year, I mean, we started off in July. So we had uh, lots of green peas, uh, sugar snaps, uh, 
garden peas, then we had uh, spring onions, we had beetroots, we had carrots, spinach, turnips, uh, 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 beans, runny beans, scarlet beans, we had lots of uh, zucchini, uh, we had lots of chilies, capsicum, tequila capsicum, red capsicum, green capsicum, uh, wildfire Mexican chili, um, uh, banana chili, uh, then we also had uh, three wines of cucumber, so we had enjoyed loads of cucumber as well. Um, I've also grafted uh, uh, a tree of uh, pomegranate out of the existing one as well. So we'll, we'll probably show you that in the next season. So on the fruit side, we had loads of uh, blueberries, we had loads of blackcurrant, we made lots of jams. The strawberry uh, crop was amazing. We're still getting strawberries, by the way, on uh, the strawberry patch. It, it just keep giving. It's Strawberry is like a fruit, which is quite prolific. If you know how to get this uh, right, uh, it's... Uh, a system of the plant that can stay with you not just for one but five to ten years so overall I mean it has been an amazing experience uh, and uh, the indoor germination has worked so much better for me rather than getting the plants from the nurseries no offense to anybody but the nurseries they bank on uh, the lack of knowledge of the new gardeners so when you hit a challenge or you hit a stumbling block during this hobby you don't need to give up learn from the challenge move on Try and get it right. It's like learning windows. You hit and you try and you hit and you try and you get to the right spot. And uh, you would know that this is how I need to do stuff. Don't listen to a lot of people. You know your garden better than anybody. You know where the sun uh, is hitting your garden for how many hours. So try and be a little imaginative when you're configuring your garden. If you're trying to convert your garden into a fruit garden, a food garden and fruit garden. So you know your garden better than anybody. Do not take advice from anyone. It's like uh, when I was in the hobby of uh, keeping fish tanks. It's L-A-G, learn as you go. So when you work in your gardens, learn as you go. You will not get everything right on the first go. So don't beat yourself upon it, move on, try different things, and you will eventually get there. I mean, this was the first season. We have had so much produce, so much produce that we have, you know, we have distributed stuff amongst friends and family and uh, everybody that I knew of. And yet we are getting so much more. And we will be getting loads more tomatoes, but I've decided not to do any more videos for the season one. This is like uh, the last video that we're doing for season one. And hopefully when we'll come back, either it's going to be when we are doing our patches for uh, 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 prepping up for the next spring, or if we are making the greenhouse. Otherwise, uh, this pretty much is uh, the conclusion of season one for the Project Food Garden. Yet again, it's an amazing day. Uh, all my friends uh, and acquaintances in the UK this, this, you guys don't even know the definition of summer. I mean, I learned it uh, uh, firsthand. I mean, it was so bright. Uh, we were trying to shoot uh, this video and my iPhone went into emergency mode that it's too hot. You need to cool down your phone in order to do the recording again. So thank you very much for all the support that uh, you guys have lended from all across the world. Truly appreciate that. And your feedback has been the driving fuel for everything that we have done so far in our garden and it's just an amazing feeling I mean I have uh, given away a lot of stuff for free as well to all of my friends if you have passion for this hobby you would never charge money from anybody so I've uh, handed out uh, offshoots of uh, black boy peach and pips and uh, if anybody would come to me for the strawberry plants by the way we're living in Christchurch more than happy to share one or two or three whatever you need uh, on that note uh, Keep dropping us your feedback. We really, really need good feedback or bad feedback or whatever feedback that we can get. Because like I said, it works like the driving fuel. So we would bid you goodbye from Project Food Garden for this summer. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon again with another series of videos with the yet more different varieties of all the veggies that we have planned for the next spring. Thank you and have a good morning, afternoon, evening and night wherever you are. Goodbye.